Alright, so in this video I'm going to be improving the audio table based uh, sound looper that we created in the last video and I'll be upgrading it so that you can program in several different playback modes and trigger them uh, individually using MIDI notes. So I'm going to create a new macro and I'm going to run both a note pitch and a MIDI gate uh, module into the inputs. And I'll also create a third input that will act as an index. The index value is just going to tell us uh, which MIDI note to use to trigger this particular playback mode. Okay, so what we're going to do inside this macro is to compare the incoming note pitch um, with our index values. And if those two values are equal, then we're going to let the incoming gate values uh, trigger some stuff for us. So we'll use this compare equal module in conjunction with a router and the incoming gate values will only be passed through the router if the pitch and the index are identical. And one other thing we want to do is make sure that the gate only triggers on a gate on value, not a gate off. So I'm going to use an event processing module called the separator to make sure only values greater than zero are going to be sent into our macro here. Okay, and so if we get a new note with the value equal to our index, we're going to want to trigger some values for our playback of our sample. So I'm going to copy all of our knobs and paste them into here, get rid of the extra stuff. What we're going to do is store each knob in a value module that gets triggered whenever we have a gate. Uh, for a note that's equal to our index value. So these values will only be sent to the audio table um, when note 48 is pressed and at no other time. So once we have one of these set up we can just start duplicating it and connecting our knobs to the inputs of the value modules. And we'll just rename these so we know where they're supposed to go once we get back into our larger structure. Okay, so once we have one of these macros built, um, we can actually just take the whole thing and duplicate it um, giving it a new uh, index value um, so this new macro will only be triggered when note 49 is pressed and we can simply merge together the outputs for each respective value and send them to where they belong in the larger structure So we can stack together uh, as many of these macros as we like to give us as many different playback modes um, of our sample as we want. And then we'll just replace these knobs that we've now duplicated into our macros anyway, and we can delete them. Okay, so as far as the audio is concerned, we're pretty much done. However, there's a little problem with the uh, user interface that I'd just like to show here. When we turn the knobs, uh, nothing's really happening. And you'll see that the visual uh, representation of the audio table only changes with a new MIDI note, but not when we're turning knobs. Ideally, 
whenever a new knob was turned, um, the that playback mode would then start controlling the audio table. So let's show how we can add that functionality to our ensemble. The first thing I'm going to do is just move all of this new code that we're making here into uh, its own macro, otherwise things are just get a little ugly and uh, it just becomes a little difficult to follow in my opinion. So I like to have things neatly uh, compartmentalized. So we'll do all of our controls in one big macro here. And we'll just simply create uh, an, in, an output for each of the merge modules we have at the end of our control macros. And once we're done creating our new outputs, we also want to make sure that they are all going to the proper place in the larger structure. So let's just connect them where they belong once more. And then we can actually delete the uh, second control macro we made because we're going to end up modifying them. So we might as well just modify it once and then duplicate the new one rather than modify it two times. And we need to send out the start and length values on any occasion where a knob turns. So I'm simply going to duplicate those value and output modules, and we're going to merge together all of the knobs such that any time one of them is turned, uh, it will trigger out the new outputs that we've created. So these values are going to be used to control our visual aspect of the audio table and not the uh, not the audio aspect of our playback. So once we have that macro made, um, we can simply duplicate that once again and um, use the outputs to add to our merge modules as we did before. So when we're done here, basically we'll have two outputs each for the start and length knobs, and we'll use one output to control the audio engine, and those will only be sent when we have a new MIDI note of that value. Um, and then the other one will control the visual aspect of the audio table, namely the XO, the X origin, and the XR, which stands for the X range inputs. And those will get triggered anytime a value, a knob in the proper macro gets turned. So now we just need to split um, the values that are calculated from our start and length knobs so that some of them are calculated on the new MIDI press and some are calculated on a new knob turn. So I'll just take a moment. And as you'll see, our audio table now instantly responds to any knob turn, and we can use it to set up to vastly different looking playback engines and hop between them at will simply by turning the knobs. Now our problem is that on MIDI playback, it doesn't automatically jump to the uh, playback method that's being used currently, so we can actually fix it so that it'll jump both on a new gate press and on a new knob turn very simply. Simply hop into our control macros once more and add an output from the router to our merge module like so. And this is such a simple uh, fix that'll just do it in both macros and be done.
So you can string together as many of these control macros as you like. You can make the whole structure polyphonic simply by adding an audio voice combiner to the end of the chain, and then you could play back multiple playback points at a time.